Hi, I'm Luke and welcome to Down From The Attic, Modern Classics, where I look at newer board games that you might not have heard of or well worth checking out. Today I'm looking at a very tiny little game that I've had for around about eight years now, Guy Splits from Zock. And I was introduced to this game in Snakes and Lattes, a board game cafe in Toronto, Canada, and the place which kicked off my interest in board games all over again. We spent quite a while playing this little game and I had to track down my own copy of this. Let's check this thing out. This is a really dinky little game which makes it perfect for taking to parties or holidays. Yes, this is a game that has come on holiday with me a few times. The box art is nice and friendly looking and the art style carries over to the play pieces too. Included with the game is a deck of 60 specially designed cards and 5 wooden objects. These are a red chair, a green bottle, grey mouse and I love the little string for his tail, a blue book and the white ghost. These are all very nicely made and painted, they have a charming quality to them and are pretty robust and considering how this game is played, they have to be. The cards have pictures on them, each card has a drawing of two of the five objects and sometimes the colours are all muddled up. The game gives a little backstory to this, Baldwin, that's the ghost, has been in the castle cellar where he finds an enchanted camera. He starts snapping photos but the camera messes up the photos, it's your job to help Baldwin figure out the right objects. Guy Splits is a reaction game and pretty accessible to people of all ages. By the way, Guy Splits translated from German means ghost lightning and it's a kind of a play on words for like a mind map or brainstorming, just in case you were wondering. How you play is very simple. The objects are put within reaching distance of all players. Someone is elected to turn over the top card and you have to be the quickest to grab the correct item. What you're looking for on the card is the object and its colour being correct. So, for example, I couldn't grab the ghost here because it's grey, not white. But the chair, the chair is in its original red, so I try and grab the red chair as quickly as I can. If I grab quick enough and guess right, I keep the card and these act as your points. You only get one guess and if you guess incorrect, you forfeit a card. Certain cards though, both objects will be represented in wrong colours, so what do you do? This requires some lightning fast mental gymnastics, but it's the colour and the object not shown. Let me walk you through this one, it can be a little bit difficult to get used to. Can't grab the bottle because it's not green and the colour of red is used so it can't be the chair. The mouse is blue so it can't be the mouse and the blue of the book is being used so that means white ghost. Okay, I'll do another one. This does take a bit of getting your head around. Okay, so this one. I can't grab the ghost because he's grey, and the grey of the mouse is used, that rules out the mouse. The bottle is blue, so both blue book and green bottle are out, so that leaves red chair. The way your brain shifts gears from recognising an object in its correct colour to working backwards which one hasn't been used is part of the fun of this game and you can get pretty adapt at it. The winner is the person with the most cards after all cards have been played. There's a couple of different ways you can play this game. You can shout the answer rather than grab for it and this is really handy if you've got a big table or as many people playing. It gives people more of a chance to win. The instructions suggest that whenever the book is shown on a card, rather than grabbing the item, you shout the answer, but this the is book. only with the book. This is another thing to keep track of and it adds another mechanic to the game, it's another thing to confuse you. Zock also made Guy Splits 2.0 and this game can be played independently of the first game or you can mix the two games together. Included in this game is another 60 cards, a white ghostess, a red towel, green frog, a blue brush and a grey tub. These two are wooden pieces, well except for the cloth towel, and you've probably noticed already that the colours of these items identically match the ones from the first game, so when you're looking at cards, it makes it even more confusing which one you're supposed to be grabbing. 2.0 plays on its own exactly the same way as the first game. There are a few additional rules that you can put in place to make things really interesting. If a frog is shown on the card, you shout out the object needed Great and not talk. grab it, same as the blue book rule. However, if the frog is depicted in its original colour, you're encouraged to shout out the answer in a foreign language. Spazola. Hantush. Bon Jovi? This is bloody difficult and it's one I've not had much luck playing with, though the instructions do show a number of different languages you can use. 
Another rule to try is what has the towel dried off? So you don't grab the item it's drying on the card, but rather the item that shares the colour of the towel. So if the ghostess is wrapped in a green towel, you don't grab the ghost, you grab the frog because it too is green. Again, this is another one to really mess with your head. Where this game gets really fun, interesting and complicated is when you mix Geisplitz 1 with Geisplitz 2. Both sets of items are put within reaching distance of the players in the two groups. Take half the cards from the first deck and the second deck and shuffle them together. You'll notice that the backs of both decks are identical and this is deliberate. You'll need to quickly determine from which group of items you're grabbing. You could be grabbing a ghost, but is it Baldwin or is it the ghost S? Use the other items on the picture to figure out the answer. The rules of both games apply here, so if the frog or the book are shown, shout the item, don't grab it. Towel shown, grab the item that shares the colour of the towel. There's a fair amount to keep track of here and it's absolutely brain baffling. Not confusing enough for you? Ha! Well there's another rule here that you can play and this one is a fun one. Jumping into the other room. If you draw a card and the item is shown in its correct colour, you don't grab that item, you go for the item from the other set. So for example, a card here is drawn showing the red towel, but instead of grabbing the red towel, you grab the red chair instead. And any rules that require you to call out in another language apply as well. Geisting. Oh, no, it's, it's Geist, it's Geist. Phew, this is really difficult. Guys, Splits 1 and 2 are really fun games, very quick to set up, very easy to explain the rules, and with it being a reaction game, the game's over fairly quickly and people will definitely want to play again. When playing with younger children, keep the rules as simple as possible, just grab the right item, none of this shout for the blue book, or shout for the frog, or different languages. Hey, I'm 34 years old and I get the rules mixed up, but when you make a mistake in this game, you know it's your fault. Green book! No, 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 it's red chair, isn't it? It's that sort of thing. Uh, but it's great fun, it really is. Um, and the game's fairly cheap as well. Both of these probably retail for about 10 to 15 pounds. So yeah, solid recommendation for both of these. Definitely check them out. Well, as always, I'm Luke. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.